Brian Grazer, thank you for joining us at the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books. Your book is A Curious Mind, and it's great to have you here. Thanks for having me, Rich. Yeah, it's really wonderful. So let's talk a little bit about the premise of the book. You, people had approached you for a while to write a book of some sort. You told me earlier that you never really were that interested in writing a book, but somebody presented this idea to you to do something different than a memoir, or you wanted to do something different than a memoir. How did it all start? Well, basically, I've, I've had this discipline I've been doing for over 30 years where I would meet a new person that's expert in anything other than entertainment. And I've done this every two weeks, minimally every two weeks, for over 30 years. So it could be science, medicine, politics, religion, athletics, um, and art, all art forms. And I just do uh, meetings where I um, do this to expand my life, expand my location of my life, um, my intellect, and emotional uh, you know, in my emotionality as well. So it's just, it's just for really self-help. Yeah, just to, 30 years. To learn and to, gain, and to gain intimacy with people that I wouldn't ordinarily know or gain in, intimacy with. 30 years we've been doing this as a discipline. Yeah. This is, uh, goes back a long way in your career, these curiosity conversations as you call them. Uh, what led you to do the book? Go down the, no, before the book, to go down this path to have these conversations. I mean, clearly you wanted to expand yourself, but that's something that at a younger well, person... Well, what a coincidence about. that we're here at USC, because it started here at USC, actually. Um, because now you, of course, are the first interviewer that can ask that question on right. USC on land, on the campus. I'll so I went to USC. I lived in a tiny, tiny little world prior to USC. This wasn't much bigger. And as I, when I graduated, I didn't know what to do, like a million other kids. Um, I thought I'd go to law school, got accepted to law school, but I just didn't think that was really something I could do or should do, even for that matter. And as when I graduated, I thought, how can I really learn something? And I thought, I want to meet the greatest professor at USC, one that I was one of 300 kids in his class, Dr. Milton Walpin. Um, he was a graduate teacher of abnormal psychology, and he had a huge, big class, and he was well-renowned, certainly. And um, and I just called and sent email or letters, rather, and uh, he kind of ignored him. <laughs> but he didn't want to do it, uh, or I didn't. He didn't react. And then I decided, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out of my comfort zone. I'm going to come back to USC and wait for him to leave his class and approach him, which I did. And uh, he said, didn't you graduate? I said, well, I did, but I really want to spend some time with you, if I could, just 10 minutes. And uh, he looked at me kind of quizzically, but he said, sure. And so I turned that 10 minutes to an, to an, into an hour and a half conversation. And in that hour and a half conversation, I learned more, by far, than I'd learned in the entire year with him. So I thought, this is something I can do with every with anybody so what I so I mean so what I did then is I, I I took that process actually into my my career what became you know my the accident of my career which was to be a writer and producer of movies and then later television shows um, and then once I wrote and produced the movie Splash which was my very real first success I vowed to bring that discipline into the area of anything other than entertainment. So once again, science or medicine, history, technology, any, anything other than show business. And then the first 20 years, I didn't really tell any, no one really knew I did it because I was so outside my universe with, with Nobel laureates in science and medicine, things like that. I just, no one knew I was doing it. I just did it. And then one day Charlie Rose, and I'd been on his show before for 24 and a few other th movies and things, he just said, I want to interview you about uh, you. I said, okay, and he goes, no, and he, you know, he always grabs your, your forearm and he says, I mean, about what you do, these meetings that you do, it's not he a- He knew about them. He knew about them and heard about them uh, through some tech people, because I, and I said, well, I'll do it. And so then once I did that, which was about 10 years ago, he said, you ought to write a book. I thought, I, I was afraid to write a book, it just felt, uh, gigantically egotistical for, for me to do that and um, it suggests that I it, it to me somehow suggested that I knew everything that I figured out the key to life and 
or the tr and I, I'm so far from figuring out anything really. And then I had a friend named Brian Lord, who's an agent or partner at CAA, and he said, "Look, Grazer, everybody knows you didn't figure out life. You know that. It doesn't suggest that at all. It just suggests that you have a process that's unique uh, to what other people do. You know, you have a learning process that is something you should probably think about sharing. It's an act of generosity." And I thought. Well, I, I can understand that, I get that, and I'll do it. Were you documenting the curiosity conversations as they were happening, or were they just furthering your life and your personality and who you were at the time? I, I took time to put stuff down. The first five years I didn't, but I had to try to recall that yeah. when I wrote the book. But um, no, I didn't, I, I, I just, I, you know, I eventually just took notes, but just for myself, mm -hmm. just so I had it. So, to, so for a lot of people who want to, who do this too, who step outside of that comfort zone and they want to find someone who can help their career, who can give them the advice, talk about some of the more interesting curiosity conversations you've had. This book is full of anecdotes and tales, but you met Michael Jackson, you met, you know, Princess Diana over a bowl of ice cream. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a single bowl of ice cream and that was your curiosity conversation, but something happened there. Well, with Princess Diana, I mean, I, I spent a couple of years trying to meet Princess Diana, but I'm sure there are many more people other than me that tried the same thing. But what happened is I became kind of, fort it became fortuitous that my location and her location intersected and that I produced the movie um, Apollo 13 and we were invited to do a royal premiere and it happened to be for Princess Diana. I mean, Charles could have come or Queen Elizabeth could have come, and but that didn't, it just, it was she. And so I thought, I thought she picked me. <laughs> um, and so after the screening, which was very successful, we, there was a dinner party for about 250 people. And she, there was a vacant seat right in front of me, and it was Princess Diana. And of course I thought, oh, this was a strategy of hers. <laughs> of I'm kind of kidding, but, but um, it just, I, I just felt like because she was sitting there and Tom Hanks was on one ha side and Ron Howard was on the other, I am going to further get outside of my comfort zone and not completely conform to the sort of royal etiquette. Right. And I would make her laugh and I would ignite, you know, conversation that she might not have initiated or, or should have been initiated. And, it, and I created, you know, a connection to her that lasted a couple of hours. And then all of a sudden dessert comes and I really, I thought I, I wanted ice cream. Yeah. So she got it for me. And then I took a bite and I asked if she'd take a scoop and then she did. People gasped around you. It's a lot of <laughs> looking and a lot of judgment being made. <laughs> That's fun. And it was really, it was fun, it was fun. And I had a further conversation with her after that. But it, it wasn't any more than that as far as intimacy, but I, I learned a lot from her. How do you I mean, I learned from everybody because here's the thing. What you do in these conversations, and anybody can do it. I mean, you read this book, A Curious Mind, You'll read these stories. Um, I started it when I had nothing. I hadn't produced anything. Anyone can do it. You just, you might be able to start with Princess Diana or Jonas Salk, the creator of the polio vaccine, or Edward Teller, the father of the hydrogen bomb. You might not start there, but you can end up there if you choose to. But you can certainly expand your life and all of the opportunities that uh, life has to offer. Yeah. So, and as you, as you begin to quantify the, the cumulative effect of these curiosity conversations in, in terms of how it's affected your career, how it's affected your decision making, how it's affected your own humility, how does that all, I mean, this has to be incredibly important to the, some of the decisions you've made in your life. Well, definitely. I mean, a lot of my, all of my creative taste is informed by these meetings because, I mean, I did feel, I didn't feel like any, you know, any meeting was going to become a movie or television show or documentary, but I did feel that by meeting people I'd never would have met and then learning, getting inside the secret to their expertise and how they did it and their, their truths in life, mm -hmm. that it would help me curate originality. Mm -hmm. That I would have a better sense for what's an, an original idea versus a, an idea that's been done or something that's passe or potentially passe. Mm -hmm. So it was it's, it completely informed my career and has helped me make unique movies and television shows, not just ones that are popular, but I think ones that are um, qualitatively distinctive. Um, but it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's brought me all these all, all the opportunities I've had in life of doing these meetings and understanding kind of the elasticity of life itself. Are they continuing? Are you continuing to do these? I still do them, man, yeah. and I still do them. And just recently I met Floyd Mayweather. That took 
even with all my, I guess, celebrity and fame, it took a year for him to say, agree to meet me. And, yeah. and as far as, you, no one's quite said humility. A lot of humility does come from this because it takes, you know, a little bit of courage to do, you know, first you have to do some homework, you have to learn about the subject and then a person. And you have to you, assume you can learn something. And you have to assume you can learn something. You have to have good questions. Because if you don't have good questions, no matter who you are, they'll just disengage. Just like my 15-year-old son. Yeah. I mean, I ask him I a generic a question question. and he just walks away. Yeah. You gotta really be living in that person's psyche. Absolutely. I mean, the best questions come from getting into another person's mind and trying to understand either why they did something or what they're going through in that moment emotionally or what they're trying to do professionally because everyone's that's achieving something is trying to do more. Um, but humility is a, is a big part of it, actually. So here you find yourself at the Los Angeles Science Festival of Books with other authors, people who have now written a book. You're not one of those people. That, how does that feel? You've added another platform to your, to your media career. I'm really excited by it. I'm so, I didn't really, I honestly didn't think I would do it or even could do it once I started. And the fact that it's finished and complete and has, I got Jeff Koons, uh, one of the famed artists, artists I met along with Andy Warhol, who's yeah. not alive any longer. He, he did the cover for me and, uh, and I'm proud of the book. It made it onto the New York Times bestseller list. And, and the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. I know. And you're on your way. I'm, I'm, excited. I'm psyched by it. Maybe I'll get back on PBS again. Yeah, I, like, I like to think so. Yeah. For the next book, too. Well, I, I uh, want to congratulate you and I thank you for joining us today. The Curiosity Conversations are incredible. I think there's an opportunity to take that to another level, too. I look forward to seeing what you do with them. But in the meantime, what they've done for you has helped all of us and we've enjoyed your entertainment for so long. And thanks for joining us today at PBS. It's been great Thanks to meet a you. lot. Yeah. Awesome, Thanks Rich. so much. Thanks. Thanks a lot.